All right, what is up guys? Karma Medic here and welcome back to another dose. I did it, I've actually gone and done it. I finally finished the huge soul destroying, life crushing USMLE step one exam. It's finished, it's done with and I can put it all behind me. USMLE step one, what? First aid book who? Mm. Do you guys taste that? It's the taste of freedom. I know, I can't believe it either. This huge thing that I've dedicated my life to for the past six months or so is gone. I feel like I have this big hole in my life that I need to replace with something else. And that's where these YouTube videos come in. I'm flying to Greece in a couple of hours, as I always do whenever I take a holiday or a break. It's gonna be so, so wonderful to just be able to actually relax, enjoy the sun, hang out with my friends, just do something different. I've literally been sat down at this desk almost 10 hours a day for like five or six months. Like, can we soak that in for a second? So yeah, I'm just really excited to honestly be a normal human again, like get back to normal activities in my life, socializing, you know, going to the gym and things like that. I've really, really missed those things. All right, I've got two big things that I wanna update you guys on in this video. The first of which is my USMLE step one exam. I wanna tell you guys a little bit about it, what the experience was like and how it went. And then the second thing is that I'm about to start my fourth year of medical school. Fourth year of medical school, damn, that has a really nice ring to it. All right, now before we get into it, can I just, um, can I take a quick, quick moment to just say a thank you to the 407,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel. I don't know if you guys can see that, but 407,000. You guys are absolutely mad. That's crazy. I don't know how you guys have gone and done that. Hello to everyone. Oh, I forgot to zoom out. Hello to everyone who's new. Hi, my name is Nasser. Hopefully you know that by now. Thank you for subscribing to this channel. Thank you for watching these videos. I hope you enjoy them and I hope you find them useful. I'll be making plenty more to come in the coming weeks and months and everything like that. So make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. All right, now let's talk about the USMLE step one exam. It's an eight hour long exam that consists of seven one hour blocks of questions and then one hour of break time that you can use to split up however you want between those seven blocks. So on the day of the exam, I actually wasn't that nervous, which I was kind of surprised about even when I was like on the tube going there and when I was standing outside the building or waiting in line to get checked in, I found myself to be like pretty calm. I was taking deep breaths and just telling myself, you know, you've done everything that you can up until this point and whatever happens now happens, you've, you've done your best. However, the night before the exam, I was definitely super, super, super anxious and nervous. I actually hadn't even thought about the fact that my exam was going to be the next day until my sister and I were having a conversation at lunch and she was saying, oh, you know, everything's gonna be finished tomorrow. You're gonna be done. It's all gonna be over. Aren't you so excited? And that's kind of when it hit me that everything I've worked for for the last six months is about to culminate in a single day in a single like eight hour setting. So yeah, that felt like a lot of pressure and that's when I started to get really anxious and nervous. So thankfully it seems like the night before I got all that nervousness and anxiety out of me and then on the actual exam day, I was pretty chill. The exam center itself was pretty intimidating. There's like cameras everywhere. There's cameras looking at your desk from a top down view. There's cameras in the hallways. Like you have to walk through a metal detector and you have to have your sleeves checked and your trouser pants checked and your pockets turned out every single time you enter. The audio! All right, let's try that again. Where your ankles are, you have to turn out all of your pockets. Um, what is happening? I swear construction has like plagued me here. Anyway, I feel so lucky that in the actual testing center, I was assigned like a corner cubicle because I felt like I had a little bit of privacy, a little bit of seclusion. And I find it really distracting when I can see people to my left or to my right, like their head or their arms and stuff like that. So I feel really lucky that I was like sort of pushed in the corner. And then, yeah, I started the first block of questions. And at that point, my heart was again, racing, racing, racing. It's like going to an interview when you sit down at the beginning and you get asked the first question, you're really nervous. But then as the interview progresses and you start having more of a conversation, you start to calm down. That's exactly how I felt. So I did two blocks back to back, took a 10 minute break and then did another two blocks back to back, trying to mimic my class classic four hour studying session that you guys have probably seen on this channel before. And then I took my 20 minute lunch break and it just so happened that the two people who were having their lunch at the same time as me, they both had recognized me from my YouTube videos from this, which is really kind of crazy and was definitely a bit of like a shock in the middle of my exam. They were both really polite and we had a nice conversation, which was great to sort of take our minds off of the fact that we were in the middle of this very big, important, stressful exam. Um, and yeah, if you guys are watching this, I hope you smashed it and best of luck. So then after lunch, the fifth block was fine. And then sort of halfway through the sixth block, moving into the seventh block, 
I was so, so, so exhausted. I wasn't tired like I wanted to sleep. I was just so drained, like mentally drained. I had been focusing as hard as I possibly could, you know, really using my brain cells and my energy to try and get these questions right for the last like five or six hours. And so I was so defocused by the time I hit that last block. And every time the thought popped into my head that, you know, you only have 30 questions left and then you'll be done with this exam, or you only have five questions left and you'll be done with this exam. I tried to push all of that away as best as I could. I didn't want to distract myself. I just wanted to stay completely focused on what I was doing and then think about all of that later. And then, yeah, pretty much before I knew it, my exam was over, the like application, the software application closed and I was just staring at a blank screen and I just kind of stared at my desk and I was like, oh my God, like, is this it? Am I done? It was, it was honestly a really weird feeling. It's weird when something you've dedicated so much time and effort to comes to a close. Even in university, when you have, you know, big exam periods at the end of the year, you know, you maybe dedicate like a couple of weeks, like max a month of hardcore studying and dedication to that, but six months all for one day, it really felt like, you know, like the world was like culminating in this like peak in this huge climax and then it was gone. The closest thing I've experienced to this is when I was studying for the MCAT exam, which is a medical school entrance exam in the United States and Canada. And I think I studied for three months for that. So pretty much half the time. So yeah, this was like, this was something completely different. Really, really strange feeling to have it all come to an end, but a very good feeling. This is a happy feeling. This is not a sad feeling. <laughs> I'm so happy it's over. Now, historically, I don't have a great track record of estimating how well I've done on a test. And if I'm honest, I don't really like to think about it. When the test results come out, the test results come out and that's when I'll know. But yeah, guys, that's it. Like this exam, which, oh my God, like the amount of notes that I took in this book, the amount of time and dedication and effort is just unbelievable. Honestly, it's unbelievable. Obviously, every student studying for this, this exam goes through the same thing, but this was how many pages? About 700 pages of content. And then there's Pathoma as well, which is another 200 pages. And then with all the other resources you end up using, there's like a thousand pages of just reading and then something like two to 3,000 questions. And then there's all the like sketchy stuff. There's, oh my God, this exam is just insane. It's absolutely insane. And if you take a look at the, the notes that I've written on the iPad, I'll put them up somewhere on the screen here. All the notes that I've taken on the iPad, pretty much like four years of your undergraduate uh, biomedical science degree. And then on top of that, your first three years of medical school. That's the content for this exam. Like it's huge. It's absolutely huge. All right, so that's it. The step one exam is completely finished. I can put that behind me. And now I'm gonna start my fourth year of medical school at King's College London. By the time you guys see this video, it'll be early September. I will have already gone on my small holiday to Greece and come back and I'm about to start medical school. I actually always look forward to starting school again after the summer, you know, medical school especially, but generally speaking, like teaching and learning and studying are things that I genuinely enjoy. And so I honestly don't mind doing them. This year we'll be spending the vast majority of our time in a hospital hospital actually on the wards talking to patients and learning how to manage them and things like that which I'm very very excited about every time we go up a level in medical school we gain more responsibility we gain more knowledge and also the fact that I've spent the last six months reading about all kinds of different diseases I'm really interested to see those things in real life so in fourth year of medical school at King's College London we all do four blocks of about eight weeks each I'm not sure if we all do them at the same time or if we're like jumbled about but we go through the blocks of pediatrics mental health emergency medicine and critical care. And then the last one is I think OBGYN or maternal health. So I'm starting on pediatrics, which I'm actually really happy about because I always feel like I have a good interaction with children. I have a good mannerism with children. And you know, I feel like it spices things up compared to all of the adults that you see in the hospital. Every year before we start in the hospitals, we have a bunch of online courses and classes that we need to complete. Most of them I'd say are like formalities, things about health and safety, uh, what to do during emergencies and things like that. So I've got to complete those over the coming week to make sure I'm prepared. And then as far as outside preparation that I I'm going to do for the upcoming year. I think thankfully all of this work that I've done for the exam is definitely going to help me and it's going to go a long way, but I am planning on getting one book. Just a second. I'm planning to get the specialties equivalent of this book over here. If you guys aren't aware of this book or you don't know about it, it's basically like a shorthand pocket book for all the major organ systems of the body. And it covers a whole bunch of different diseases and management. It's very, very helpful. It's something that I used a lot when I was studying for my exams at King's College London. And I carry it on the wards with me. If I'm honest, I don't really check it that much when I'm on the wards because I find that there's enough for me to do already without having to pull out a book. Even though historically, I have very rarely used books to accompany my lectures in medical school because now we have so few lectures and so much time spent in the hospital on 
placement, I think it's going to be helpful to have a book so that I can sort of follow along and take a look at what are the types of things that I should be seeing or should be learning about while on placement. Luckily, I've been placed in London based hospitals for most of my placements over the next two years. So I'm not going to have to move anywhere for like eight weeks at a time. There's only one placement where it might make more sense to do that because it's a little bit further away. But I think I'll see how it goes when we get there. So yeah, I'll be able to stay in London, stay within my social circle within the social life that I have here, which I think is really great. I think it would be a shame if in my fourth and fifth year of medical school, I would have to sort of go somewhere else and start fresh in terms of a social life or a new city and things like that. I'm happy that I get to stay where I am. Also, I have everything that I need here. I have, you know, my massive monitor behind me. I've got this huge desk, all of my lighting and my equipment for filming these YouTube videos. I don't really want to be moving all that around. When school starts again, I'll be able to make more medical school vlogs, which I'm really excited about because that's what that's what I really enjoyed doing on this channel. That's sort of what helped and made it grow. Yeah, I think making medical school vlogs is really fun, you know, taking you guys along on a whole day and explaining to you what it is that I'm doing at different times. Because yeah, at the end of the day, the goal of this channel is really to give you guys an insight into what life is like at medical school and also hopefully help you with your studies and things like that at the same time. So yeah, I'm excited to start making vlogs again. I'm excited to start uploading on this YouTube channel on a weekly basis. I know I took a little bit of a break. You guys have left me such great comments on the last video. So thank you guys for that. Thank you for your continued support. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it for major life updates. USMLE step one exam is finished. I'm about to start medical school. And in the middle, I'm gonna take a quick little holiday. So I should probably get going finish off this packing and get ready to go to the airport. Once again, thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you found it useful. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did, don't forget to leave a like on it and subscribe to my channel to see more content from me in the future. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Guess who's back? Guess who's back? Guess who's back? But I'm done. I'm done. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Alright, that's probably not going in the edit.